Hi, I'm going to talk about small DC servos, the differences between the continuous and non-continuous types, and how to control them by your Arduino. This will be a post on my blog. I have a series of posts talking about using the Arduino IDE to program the Atmega 328P's internal registers. Here are examples of the two types of servos, continuous on the left, not continuous on the right. They look identical, but operate very differently. I'll be demonstrating the operation of each servo with this setup. The Arduino sketch will be the same for both servos. I use the pulse width modulation output of the Atmega's internal timer counter one. Both servos require a pulse repetition frequency of 50 hertz, 20 milliseconds between pulses. This seems to be typical of these small DC type servos. Varying the width of the pulses determines the position of the non-continuous servo and the speed of the continuous servo. A pulse width of 1.5 milliseconds turns the continuous servo off and centers the position of the non-continuous servo. This is the non-continuous servo. It can swing through an arc of 180 degrees. When you change the pulse width, the servo shaft rotates to a new position and stops. Note the scope trace changes as I program a new position. Now the continuous servo. At a pulse width of 1.5 milliseconds, the shaft doesn't turn. As we increase the pulse width, the shaft turns clockwise. The wider the pulse width, the faster the shaft turns until the pulse width reaches about 2.0 milliseconds. Pulse widths below 1.5 milliseconds turn the shaft counterclockwise, and as the pulses get narrower, the speed increases until the pulse width reaches about 1.0 milliseconds. Actually, there is a difference between the two servos. The continuous servo has screwdriver access to a potentiometer. Turning the pot also controls the speed. This is very useful in setting the balance between the clockwise and counterclockwise speeds. For example, the clockwise speed at 1.6 milliseconds should be the same as the counterclockwise speed at 1.4 milliseconds. Turning the pot can adjust that. This is the Arduino sketch used to control both servos. The first 46 lines are comments providing details of how I programmed the Atmega's registers to obtain the pulse width modulation, pulse repetition frequency, and the pulse width. To read this in the proper context, view the Atmega P's data sheet, chapter 16. Lines 52 to 59 get the user input from the serial monitor, and lines 61 to 68 are the setup and loop functions. Note there is a happy coincidence in that the input values correspond exactly to the pulse width in microseconds. For example, to set a pulse width of 1.5 milliseconds, you input 1500. Finally, I show the serial monitor screen. For more information, this video will be on the post following my April 17th, 2016th post. Thank you for watching.